I wish people had have seen that very bouncy intro. I'm sorry about that. You mean this? <laughs> yeah. So, but it's not, Friday. Someone's got a new office chair. That's no, I've had this forever. This is my. Oh. It's called, for those of you who can't wait for me to drop another uh, product placement on this program. <laughs> First of all, welcome everybody to Chaps Many Cultures. This is your Friday episode with two weirdos who are, or at least one weirdo who's bouncing up and down. Now, why am I bouncing up and down? Because I've been sitting on a, I think it's called Nils Erik, which is a product from a Swedish furniture manufacturer that is known around the world. Their colors are blue and yellow and they come from the country of Sweden, hence the colors. Um, <laughs> And Niels Eric is a bouncy fellow. Yeah, there you go. It's not one of those one of, one of those ball chairs where you sit. It's on a and mushroom. And All right. Mushroom. So since you've been asking, <laughs> and since IKEA is not paying me for this, this is what it looks like. All right. Ah, yes. Yeah. It's a bouncy mushroom. Very nice. All right, there we go. Makes you sit up straight, shoulders back. I love it. Well, welcome everybody to Friday, episode fifty-five. Two chaps, many cultures. Posing the question, posing a question, which we always try and do because we like to ask questions and get answers or at least offer our opinions on whether uh, a performance is a or an, an out. Well, we, we kind of put it in the negative term a little bit, but um, I think mm -hmm. all performance is performance, whether positive or negative, cultural, or is it, um, it does it have to do with other things? So in terms of, I guess, in some, get, we get asked this question by uh, clients all the time. Is there something I can identify culturally and how can I address it? Um, right. Any, any thoughts? Well, I mean, there, there's the, the obvious question that I get a lot as well. Uh, we only, our business only touches two different cultures, home base, where the company's from, and this one other market that we've been successful in. And we figured it out over time. So basically, we, we're we good. And the, the issues that we're facing, there are more performance related. Or th these are typical business challenges like um, sales projections or um, customer service processes or well, whatever it may be. And I challenge clients, I challenge people and say, well, are you sure this is not related to culture? And there's one, and we put that in the show notes, there's one gentleman that I think encapsulated that quite quite elegantly, Mr. Lou Gastner, who was the head of IBM for many, many years. And he put it, I'm paraphrasing, he put it in a way that he recognized during his time at this very global company, IBM, that culture isn't simply one facet of leadership or one, one element that he needed to pay attention to. Um, or I think he said, it, it's not, a culture is not just a part of the game, it is the game. And obviously he did not only refer to um, cultural based on uh, nationality, regionality, linguistics. He also referred to as culture as an organizational puzzle piece, as an organizational cultural question. And th that's where my answer to a client would come in and say, well, yes, you may be very good in dealing in your home culture and in your away culture, and you, you're doing excellent work in in defining a way of working successfully together yet have you created a internal an organizational culture that allows you to react to challenges or opportunities in the most efficient way and that that's when the when the conversation with the client can go really deep in a rabbit hole and my argument that i always make is it's always the culture it, it's it's a culture. Sorry. It, mm. to, I mean, obviously, with, with, with our work that we do and with, with culture as the, the label on basically every product, every service, every program that we create, it, it probably might be surprising if we left it out or if we thought that it was not about culture. However, I'm, I'm, over all these years, I've become so convinced of the fact that 
if people don't work well together, if they don't find a way to figure stuff out, then it's a cultural issue. Then we need to talk about how do you make culture? How do you improve it for your organization? Th mm. Those are my thoughts that came up immediately. I don't know your take, Brett. Yeah, absolutely. I, well, you, we, if you're just talking about a, a, a biopic view of it, so a home culture and a away culture, I can see where you can, you can actually be kind of almost, uh, well, it seems to go against the, the term itself, but it's almost a tunnel vision, is that that's all we've got to deal with. But in amongst those is the, yes, the organizational culture, the difference between how that's been established in each country and also the any other outside influences of people that you've got on your team that perhaps their cultural tendencies, um, albeit that we don't want to ash, uh, ascribe all of the, uh, the, the blame, for want of one of a better word, to any of that. But um, if you can identify some of these contrasts, then possibly you can take advantage and have uh, bring the positiveness of the cultural influence that a particular person does to a project, to a global uh, set of goals, um, or and and to establish a culture that's a great mix of both. And and right. so I think that if you can identify it, even whether whether it's pot, I mean we we tend to leave things alone when they happen well, <laughs> right? So we don't you know if it's not broken, don't fix it. But maybe that's the best time to actually identify if it if there's a cultural thing at work that is that is that is helping us succeed and to really leverage it because if if you only wait for things to go wrong then it gets into blaming then it gets into well it's such and such fault or it's the fault of the culture and so therefore so I think the best time I mean I may be getting off topic here but I think the best time it just came to me is it when things are going good and have somebody in the organization that can look at everybody's culture, their preferred styles and see what's working here, what can we really leverage and maybe t uh, expand that to build a really good organizational culture. And I, I think this, this is so critical because I'm because we did an episode not too long ago. No, uh, I think we, we headlined it, Know Thyself. So how well does an organization know itself? An organization is not an abstract entity. An organization is a group of people, people who work uh, along a common objective. How well does leadership, how well do the stakeholders in the organization know each other? How well do you know your people? And have you done the audit? Have you done a culture audit? Have you have you looked at who prefers which way of working with each other? And this doesn't have to be because you're a global entity. You can do this as a as a as a domestic. Oh my, my mushroom sponsor. You can you can do this as a as a domestic organization because culture isn't bound by national borders. Culture is generational, uh, ethnic. Uh, along gender lines, along socioeconomics, along regions, you name it. There are so many layers of culture that affect how your organization, the people in your company, do business best. And I had this conversation this morning with somebody who does business development in the life sciences field. And he was calling me because he's frustrated with some of his clients in Europe who he's helping to get sales here in North America. So these are life sciences companies, startups or small mid-sized enterprises in, in Central Europe who see the US as a very lucrative market, which it is. And they approach it with this Central European approach of sales and marketing. We have a better mousetrap. We have a more efficient solution. Maybe we are cheaper. And if we're not cheaper, we're better because of data, data, fact, fact, um, spec sheet, spec sheet, case study. And sometimes that works in North America. More often than not, this approach does not serve them well because that's not incentivizing their salespeople in the United States to crank the numbers. Because, hate to say it that bluntly, in the US, the major incentive or the, the major aspect of, will, of what will get you business as a foreign entity, as an abroad service provider is 
show me the money if you haven't seen the movie yet um <laughs> jerry mcguire yeah. go watch it when cuba gooding cuba gooding jr calls tom cruise in his office and says say it out loud show me the money so it's about the greenbacks it's about the benjamins in north america unless you understand what drives business decisions from an abroad perspective you'll run against walls. So you might say, well, this is a sales issue or this is a um, in incentive issue. At the core of it is you haven't figured out that this is a cultural challenge you're running against. And as long as you keep ignoring that, you're going to bounce your head against the wall like my bouncy like chair. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, I think this has application and I, having a background in retail, I was always, uh, actually probably I wasn't very cognizant of it as I am now, but um, I, I think now you can even bring this down to a real micro level at a local community store, a mum and pop store. If that, all they did was just take a little bit of time to consider the culture of the community that's around them, because it's, uh, I live in a very diverse community with different people from different backgrounds. And, and I'm often struck by how there's this single singularity of viewpoint of how to serve a client in the just the mum and pop stores around us. And I think, does that affect, does that Im, uh, impinge a little bit of success? If you're not cognizant of the cultural preference, uh, pre preferences of your potential client or customers that just do business with you in a local city, in a local town, then right. you know you can then expand that into a global organization the two are, are not unrelated i wouldn't think I, I agree with you whether it's a mom and pop or maybe if well mom and pops might struggle more with this than bigger retail organizations i like you i live in a fairly diverse neighborhood in the city that i'm in i'm in atlanta and if i just go to a, a regular grocery store one one of which there are many across the region i'm not naming any but if I look at their shelves here in my neighborhood, and if I look at the shelves in the same department, three neighborhoods over, you'll recognize that the products that are on display are not the same. Mm -hmm. So they some somebody did their market research. So they understand that the demographics are different. And let's say in the cosmetics and hair care department, if you're in a black neighborhood, you got to have hair product that caters to African hair. And if you are in a predominantly uh, white neighborhood, then you may not need as much of that, right? So th they they do respond to that. For maybe for a, a family-owned business or a smaller entity, that lesson may not be as obvious to them because they don't have multiple outlets. So they they only respond to what's in their immediate neighborhood. So th I think it depends on the, the size of the organization, how flexible they need to be for success, right? Mm. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But I think that if you if you went into a, uh, a neighborhood to do business where you perhaps don't live there and you haven't lived there, you know, but you, you, you've just taken on, um, having been in the past, having two stores myself in two different parts of a, of a city, um, there, there's definite... A definite a little bit of research that has to be done around the local market uh you know it's demographics it's culture it's uh it's cultural heritage and things like that but uh, right. uh, it doesn't take uh, i mean then that, that there are resources out there i guess there's resources of people and things and online that you can find um as far as that kind of or just even just ask the local community himself you know so, um local I'm, I'm struck how even in my local community, I've approached the local chamber of commerce with some of the cultural I, uh, um, ideas, I mean ideas, but cultural frameworks that I've suggested that have you ever ha hosted an event that talks to your members about the cultural mix of the community here? And they kind of, there's a little, few blank stares because they think that, that, well, doesn't everybody just know this? Or, and, and oftentimes they don't. You know, right. because especially if you're in a diverse community, a very, a very kind of local diverse community, you could be you could be missing out on pretty much 80 percent of a potential client if you're not serving that diverse community. And of course, 
resources come into it and how much you can mix it up. But it's an, an interesting uh, concept. So um, I think that, uh, yeah. I think you made a, a, a critical observation there that there is an assumption that the market knows or the company understand what's going on in the market. Right. Um, assumptions are quicksand. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> tough, it's tough to build a, a solid foundation upon, upon assumptions. It's, it, it, it's odd to, to, to encounter that. And it's, it, it's sometimes, obviously at first for me, it's frustrating when I recognize people assume that this is what the, this is the situation they're dealing with. And then I recognize, well, th there's an opportunity for me to engage. Right. Mm. But yeah. overall, I think the, and that this is why we're, one of the reasons I think why we're doing the, this daily program is to drive home the message that culture and cultural aspects are not some fuzzy woo woo nice to have when we're doing well and we have no, no other problems to, to, to handle kind of issue. No, it's actually a foundational piece. If, if you don't get culture right, it will bite you in the behind. And that is true for your, your, small mid-sized business locally and this is even more so true if you're doing business outside of your region and outside of your uh your language and cultural zone so i think lou garrison was right and i mean i you don't have to be an ibm to 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 come to that conclusion um but it, it culture isn't just a puzzle piece it, it's the entire picture absolutely drop the mic <laughs> okay, so then we, we, we go home now. <laughs> we go home. No, we can sit around and talk about this all weekend because it is the weekend. What else are we going to do? What are you going to do on the weekend, by the way? I, I must not say. You must not say. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I might divulge on a Monday. However, <laughs> as we go into the weekend, those of you who are watching, um, Shana Tova to those of you who are celebrating the beginning of a new year. May it be prosperous to you and may it bring you sweetness and joy and success. And for those of you who are more interested in what does that mean? What is this guy talking about? I'm obviously talking about Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the Jewish New Year, which happens tonight. So uh, Shabbat Shalom to those of you who observe that. And maybe, just maybe, we can't confirm that yet, but maybe next week we'll have a little deep dive into that topic. So fingers crossed. Very fascinating. And just uh, related to that, the, the new the new season of uh, Schittel is out. The, the, the new, um, the new, the, uh, I mean, I will talk more. Oh, Schittel? And now he froze. I hope it's not me who froze. Uh, you still there, Brett? That's that's the that's the beginning of a new year. This is a sign that we need to be done for tonight. Series. Uh, uh, about, uh, uh, the Jewish. It sounds like we're having we're we're technical back. issues with my friend who's who's yes, working from a dungeon tonight because the the minions on the top floor have told him he must vacate the premises so they can put in some new paint and some new All right, can you see me now we can see you back now so have have they put the plug back in all right oh man those minions no. gotta be careful with them no Can't. all right guys Can't see me. Th this was the friday episode <laughs> of two chaps many cultures as Brett recollects himself digitally, we'll come back to you on Monday. This was episode 55. Can you believe it? It's I'm bouncing up and down. Enjoy. All right. Happy weekend, everybody. Talk to you again on Monday. And we will post right. the update on when and how. <laughs> the plug back in, I think. All right. Sorry.